Hi everyone, let's practice creating correlations and correlation tables in Excel. So here I am in the My Educator chapter. There is a data set, Bike Buyers Data Formatted. And you may already have the data in the right format if you've already performed the previous, uh, where is it at? Here we go, the box plot example up here in Excel. However, if you didn't follow that example, no problem. Just grab the fresh formatted clean data found right down here, Bike Buyers Data Formatted, download it. Let's open it up. All right, here we have it. Let's get this in frame, enable editing. So in this workbook, I have three worksheets. Uh, let's see here, there we go. I'm gonna close this one out. Don't save that one. There we go. So same data as before, here's the original. Each row represents a person who's come into our store and either did or did not purchase a bike. However, uh, I've made another version of the same data because correlations can only be calculated on numeric data. What I've done here is I've made a bunch of uh, new columns. So whereas before for marital status, we had married or single. Now I've created a code here, one versus zero. So if there's a field that only has two values, I can turn that binary field into a set of zeros and ones. Now, if a field has more than two values, for example, education. Here's our original education table. We've got bachelors, uh, graduates, high school, partial college, partial high school. In this case, I've got several values. However, there is order to the values. They're ordered. So I turned each of these uh, into numbers over here. So partial high school is the least amount of education. I turned all of those down here into ones. Uh, high school right here is two, partial college three, uh, bachelor's four, graduate degree five. So the, uh, the limitation of this is that although the numbers here are incremented by one each time, we can't assume that the difference from partial high school to high school is the same difference as partial college to bachelor's. However, since there is some order to it, there is some validity of using these numbers. So we're going to use this for the sake of, of this example. Similarly, commute distance, that also had text, but there's an order to it. It increased, so I've changed that to a set of one through five. Cars is already numeric, age is already numeric. Home ownership, I turned that into zeros and ones because it was either a yes, no value over here. And then lastly, purchase bike, either yes or a no, no zero for no, one for yes. So with this data, let's start, first begin with uh, using the, the correlation function that you probably learned previously. All right, so we're gonna use a function called corel, and it's really simple. You put in two what they call arrays. arrays. An array is a set of numbers. So what I can do is come over here and say, let's look at the correlation between income. I'm gonna select the first income, not the header. Control shift down, and then I'm going to hit a comma and then select the variable I want to correlate it with. So let's correlate income with children. Control shift down, close parenthesis, and now notice I have here Corel array one is represented by the table column income. And notice it didn't use cell references because this is an Excel table that has this extra metadata built into it. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And over here, it's now giving me a correlation coefficient. Again, the correlation coefficient is the result of this mathematical formula that you read through in the chapter. Now, don't think that you're gonna to have to memorize this for an exam. Well, actually, you better ask your instructor. For the exams that uh, we're giving out, you're not going to need to memorize this function or calculate any of this by hand, but we wanted you to see exactly uh, how it works and break down the math. It's really not too complex. Anyhow, um, back to our Excel spreadsheet. This is a useful function for just looking at the correlation coefficient between two variables. However, we're often going to want to look at a set of variables. So let's do that next. Uh, click on data, and we're going to use the data analysis tab. So excuse me, the data analysis features. Select correlation from the box, hit OK. Now this little box, remember it's not quite as user friendly um, as other features in Excel, we have to make sure that you click on this little uh, button right here before we select the input range. The input range is a set of variables we want to correlate together in a matrix. 
So if I want to look at all of these numeric variables, I can look at the correlation of marital status to each of these other ones, and gender to each of the other ones, and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and select all the variables that are numeric that I want to correlate. Control shift down, enter. The data is grouped by columns, meaning that each column represents a different field, so that's appropriate. I did select the labels, so I'm going to check labels in first row. Lastly, where do I want to output it to? Now I can't just click on the cell yet because notice I currently have the input range selected. I have to click down here and then go in the worksheet, pick a place to print it out. This will do. Hit OK. Let's scroll over and take a look at this. Notice, let's say I want to look at the correlation between age and income. So I find age. Here it is on the top, and I scroll down to income. Okay, look, it's blank. Why is it blank? Well, it's because in a matrix, I can also come to age down here and move over to income and find it right here. So rather than repeat all the data, we just include half of it. So the correlation, because it's positive, what that means is the relationship between age and income is positive. In other words, as people get older, their income tends to go up. However, you could also interpret that the other way around. As income goes up, people tend to be older. The correlation table doesn't tell us which variable causes the other one. It simply represents the correlation. So 0.17 depends on the amount of data we have, but that could be a very significant correlation or it could be not significant. The table doesn't tell us. In my opinion, this is definitely a significant correlation, but we won't know that for sure until we perform some additional analyses. Let's look at some others. Um, I want to find a high negative one. For example, right here, relationship between cars and purchase bike. It's negative 0.2. Now, if we took the absolute value of this, it's actually higher than this 0.169 between age and income. As a result, this correlation is stronger, meaning that the relationship between cars and whether or not they purchase a bike is stronger than age to income. However, because this, the sign is negative, what that means is as one variable goes up, the other goes down. So as people have more cars, they're less likely to purchase bikes or the other way around. As people own more bikes or have purchased bikes, they're less likely to own cars. So once again, in summary, correlations are stronger as they are closer to positive or negative one. In terms of correlation strength, a negative 0.8 is equal to, excuse me, I better say equals 0.8. Negative 0.5, greater than or less than 0.4. Which one is it? Hopefully you said greater than. Again, because 0.5 is closer to negative 1 than 0.4 is to 1, this is a stronger or a higher correlation. So as correlation coefficients, these values right here, get closer to 0 from either direction, the, the strength of the correlation is decreasing. So one more example, a correlation of 0.17 is less than a correlation of negative 0.54, even though this number is actually higher than that one. So uh, lastly, in case you're wondering, we have these uh, ones here through the diagonal. If you trace these back uh, or trace them out, this is education related to education. The reason why this is a 1 is because it's saying that for each unit increase in education, this variable education, which is itself, changes by the exact same amount. Therefore, the correlation is a perfect one, which never happens in practice. If it does, we shouldn't be listing both variables um, in our correlation table. Anyway, that's it for correlations in Excel. Uh, practice this again on your own if you feel like you need uh, some extra work on it.